The San Francisco Chronicle recently wrote an article telling people that Spanish is transphobic. And it's apparently a very serious issue. However, I can't even read their article unless I give them money. Hey guys, transphobia is very serious, but I'm not going to tell you anything about it unless you pay me. And they even have ads on the site already going and stuff, but still not good enough, eh? Remind me who the grifters are again. So I guess we'll use the Washington Examiner, who is still NewsGuard certified, 92 and a half out of 100. And their article is not paywalled, and they're talking about that article. So like I said, we'll use this one. As much as I'd like to read the original article, here we are. They say, do you speak Spanish? You are now transphobic. They write, now according to one left-wing professor, the entire Spanish-speaking world is to be condemned as quote-unquote transphobic. Writing for the San Francisco Chronicle, Sebastian Ferrada declared that the refusal by Latinos to use the activist creations Latinx or Latin in order to degender the word is transphobic. We'll get right back to the article, however, if I may interject to give you a little bit of backstory, because I think you're going to find this rather comedic. And if you do, please consider liking and or subscribing to help the video out, help the channel out. I truly appreciate it. So I've lived in SoCal my whole life, and I've been around Spanish-speaking people pretty much my whole life, too. And especially when I was working at the restaurant, met a lot of Spanish-speaking people, picked up some Spanish because I was there for a number of years. And then, like, a year ago, I was skating with my friend, and I was telling him, like, I want to learn Spanish, like, actually, officially learn it. But I didn't uh, didn't commit to that until actually like five or six days ago when I finally did commit to learning Spanish officially. Going to focus every day, X amount of time on it. And I actually have been using a website and I just picked up this book as well. So imagine my shock when like a handful of days into finally officially learning Spanish, I see this article pop up that says, hey, if you're, if you're Spanish speaking, you're transphobic. I'm like, bro, are you serious? Like four, three days into learning Spanish, I see that. And the timing is especially crazy and hilarious, by the way, because like the whole Hogwarts Legacy thing has been going down. Hey, gamers, can we play Hogwarts Legacy and not be transphobic? Okay, we're getting over that. Well, now Spanish spe Spanish speaking people. Hey, y'all are the transphobes now. Why do these freaking activist types and like... I, it, it sucks that the word activist has even become this because it used to be a good thing. Nowadays, it's like, oh yeah, if you're activist, you're just tearing down other people, just ruining everything, making issues out of non-issues and like actually being bigoted. Spanish, look, I don't know much about it at all, but I do understand that a lot of, a lot of words are gendered in Spanish. It's not just Latino and Latina. Like if that's their argument, they're gonna, they're gonna want to switch so many other words in Spanish too. Who are they to tell the entire Spanish-speaking people of the world that they're the bigots and they need to adjust to what they deem fit? That's the bigoted take right there. Okay, now back to the article. We have a quote here from that professor, Sebastian Ferrada. Oh, by the way, Sebastian. I feel bad for all the Sebastians out there now. You got to be associated with this dude. Sebastian from Hogwarts Legacy does not deserve to be associated with this guy. Sebastian, the student, is freaking awesome. This Sebastian Ferrada journalist guy is a freaking weirdo. Here's the quote. The linguistic debate on Latinx then serves as a useful example to understand the transphobia prevalent in our community. Bro, I just imagine Spanish people just like not even like, they're just like, what? We're just talking. <laughs> he concludes, the insistence on rejecting the use of Latinx is a transphobic act. Okay, at some point you gotta wonder if these sort of weirdos, these sort of weirdo activists, whatever, are just trying to set trans people up. Like these demands are getting more and more ridiculous. What's gonna be next? They're gonna say, hey, if you breathe oxygen, you're all transphobes. Basically what I'm getting at, while that's obviously a facetious example, you can see how they are getting more and more extreme. And like I said, what I'm getting at is that they almost seem to want to make people transphobic. Back at the article, they actually raise a similar point to what I just brought up. And it's true, like they're making a ridiculous, demand and then like by default they're making the majority of spanish-speaking people transphobic by default because they're not gonna use latinx so how is that possibly helping trans people to just be like hey trans people fyi almost every spanish-speaking person in the world is a transphobe because of our bourgeoisie weirdo definition and we're really trying to help you by the way like Again, how is that helping trans people? Spoiler alert, it's not. It's making things worse. Back at the article, they continue to write that only 2% of Hispanics identify as Latinx. In fact, 40% find the term offensive, which shouldn't be a surprise given that it has been pushed on them by white liberals, along with the demands that they change the entire structure of the Spanish language to obscure that gender of adjectives and nouns. Frada joins in making those demands with another quote. What is most striking about these debates 
is that they rarely, if ever, center the voices and experiences of the transgender, non-binary, and gender-fluid Latin people who do identify with the term. He asserts that Spanish must instead move to gender-inclusive language so that it can acknowledge that trans people do in fact exist. Oh my gosh, dude, if I was trans, I would just be like so annoyed by people like this. Like, yeah, obviously I exist. I'm breathing right now, you idiot. And as mentioned, like those sort of takes are not helping trans people. They're just like making everyone more volatile because their take is extreme. It's bizarre. It's unreasonable. Whatever word you want to use to fill in the blank. Although speaking of extreme, I also disagree with the article here because they make a generalization about uh, non-binary and gender fluid people saying they just want attention. And the fact is there are plenty who don't want the attention and don't even like the journalists like the San Francisco Chronicle Sebastian dude trying to use them for the argument, uh, excuse me, for their bigoted argument. So I disagree with this. Continuing though. In contrast, there are an estimated 448 million native Spanish speakers on the planet. In what sense is it inclusive to exclude nearly all of them from polite society and label them as bigots because they won't adopt your weird artificial version of what you think their language should be changed to? Well, I, I, I agree with that part, obviously. And don't forget, if they do this to Spanish, they'll also have to do it to French, Italian, Portuguese, German, Arabic, which even genders its verbs, and dozens of other languages worldwide. This is arguably the single most exclusionary argument anyone could ever make, excluding perhaps 70% of humanity just for the language they speak. It's, well, it's Latinophobic. Actually, on that note, I've got a question. Please correct me if I'm wrong on this. But to my understanding, didn't a phobia of something generally mean that it's like an extreme fear of it? Why is phobia used so often nowadays when it has nothing to do with like an extreme fear? For example, case in point, the San Francisco Chronicle and Sebastian's take that we went over in this video. Saying that Spanish is transphobic because people refuse to use latinx that has nothing to do with a fear of trans people so like it, it did science change like what's going on here can anyone fill me in on this i, I must be missing something interestingly enough over on nbcnews.com they would actually write that latinx was becoming an official term on elite college campuses popular among academics progressives young activists and lgbtq groups who wanted gender neutral terminology and uh, that many Latinos, like the person writing this article actually, saw the X as odd and off-putting because it doesn't follow the traditional structure of Spanish, making it awkward and difficult to pronounce because in Spanish few words end with two consonants. And that a recent national survey of Hispanics and Latinos showed that the term Latinx is highly unpopular. Influential media and advocacy groups have started dropping the term or even arguing against its use to avoid offending those who dislike it. It might have been intended to be more inclusive, but it actually can feel exclusionary to everyday people. There is very little to no support for its use, and it's sort of seen as something used inside the Beltway or in the Ivy League tower settings. Yeah, it's like the bourgeoisie, man, trying to push this on everyone else. It's ridiculous. That's the irony of Latinx. It's supposed to be inclusive, but erases a crucial part of Latin American identity and language and replaces it with an English word. <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't even catch that part. Holy smokes. You want to talk about colonizers? <laughs> oh man. Why is it always that like so many of the activists are the most bigoted, man? That's hilarious. I mean, obviously I should have put two and two together, but it just didn't didn't click like that for some reason. My gosh. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Hope you guys enjoyed this segment. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments. Thank you for tuning in and especially a big shout out to the Spanish speaking audience on the channel for this one for obvious reasons. And that said, I greatly look forward to continuing to learn Spanish. And guess what? I ain't using Latinx. Nice try, journalists and bourgeoisie. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you in the comments and in the next segment.